In the immortal words of Elwood Blues, you want me to wash the dead bugs off the radiator? In this episode of Aston1936.com, I'm going to show you how to clean the exterior of your radiator. So most of the time when we're driving, right, where bugs and dirt and debris are coming through, the engine air intakes are filtering it out for the air that goes in to be combusted. But all the bugs and everything really just come through the grill and come th through and splatter across um, the different radiators that are at the front of the car. So, uh, this is the air conditioning radiator and then this bigger one in behind here is the actual engine coolant radiator. And my car's got about 50,000 miles on it. Uh, right now I've decided during my annual service I'm going to change my engine coolant. Um, and you'll probably see a link to how to do that up here. But I took off the engine slam panel which normally covers this area. A link will be up here as well. And to expose the radiator cores. And you can see, uh, maybe up here in close up, that you know that basically we've got dead ladybugs, there's dead bees stuck in over here, and we start to collect debris on the front of the radiator. Now the air goes through these pores uh, to help cool the, uh, the engine off, and if these pores start to clog up substantially, we'll reduce the cooling capacity uh, of the car. Well, I'm not having any cooling issues, but because I was in doing all this other stuff, and I could see that the radiator was uh, dirty, I figured now would be a great time to figure out how to give this a little bit of TLC, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So one interesting shot we might go after here is to take a look, it's not just the surface dirt, it could also be stuck in the channels um, between all the fins. So let's see if we can get a look inside there. So if we look through there, we can actually see that it's, uh, there's some of the passages are clogged up. And I'm going to show you uh, how we can actually get those cleaned out as well. Let's get started and I'll show you how I did it. Need just a couple of things to get the job done. Uh, so let's go over. So I have here a small uh, pick, no ring pick, but uh, the tip, crucial part is it's just got a very small tip that I can pick bugs out of the radiator fins. I have a detailing brush, uh, which is a, sort of a soft bristle brush that I can use to brush off some of the surface debris. Uh, you could substitute a paintbrush if you don't happen to have one of these handy. Uh, I have a shop light which is always good for checking uh, in dark places. Uh, Going to need a hose and I have a hose nozzle that I can set to um, a gentle shower. We don't want to have a jet of water, we want a gentle spray so uh, we'll have a hose and some water. And then I've got my shop vac and I have a bristle brush, a soft uh, upholstery tip for that. Uh, to basically we're going to try and vacuum out some of the debris as well. Um, so in addition to the tools, we're going to use a cleaning solution. So this is a new Calgon 4171-75 Evap Foam No Rinse Evaporator Coil Cleaner. So essentially this is a, uh, a sort of a biodegradable, um, okay for the environment, uh, cleaning solution that we're going to use to foam up and get some of the dirt out of the radiator and I'll show you that in a, uh, when we get to that step. So to get ready to clean the radiator we just have a couple of prerequisites. Uh, the first thing is we need to remove the engine slam panel. That's this panel that once you've got the hood open that covers the tops of the radiators. Basically air goes in the front and then the slam panel keeps the air uh, trapped forcing it through the radiator cores. So uh, up here you'll find a link to uh, how to remove the slam panel. The other thing you're probably going to want to do is remove the under tray for the car um, because we're going to make a mess, we're going to wash it through the core and that's going to come down on top of the uh, under tray and leave a giant mess on top of the under tray which you probably don't want. Um, so if you have the under tray off as part of an annual service routine, this is a really logical time to do it because it takes a fair bit of effort to take the under tray off but you can find a link to how to do that up here. So the first step of the uh, cleaning process for the radiators uh, is kind of a tedious one. You can choose to dive in all the way on this or just do a quick uh, superficial kind of clean on it, but uh, basically we're going to manually try to get as much of the debris off the grill as possible. 
And so I have a couple of tools that I'm going to use for this. I have my shop vac with a soft bristle tip. We don't want to have anything hard plastic rubbing against uh, these fins. These fins are uh, delicate. So we're going to come in and uh, I'm going to give it a light vacuum and see how much of it I can just get off with uh, the vacuum tip. Um, you're also going to see me use uh, a detailer brush. So this is a, a simple couple of dollar detailing brush off Amazon and I can come in basically and you know so there's a bug and I can I can basically flick uh, some of the stuff off of uh, the girls. So I'm not trying to push it in, I'm trying to just use this to brush sideways to clean some of the debris off. And this is also gentle enough where it's not going to damage any of the fins. And then the last tool I might use is a pick. So you gotta be careful with this. You could get in here and do some damage, but let's say there was you know, a stone or something really you know, plugging up one of the passages you could basically come in here and just do a little um, cleanup work very delicately and uh, basically pick out any of the chunks. So how much effort you get into this depends on how anal retentive you are. Um, if you watch this channel at all, you know I'm gonna go at this. I'm gonna do it in time lapse and you're gonna watch it go from uh, dirty to clean in you know, the next 10 or 15 seconds. So let's get it done. Okay, for the next and exciting phase of the project, uh, we've moved outside the shop. It's December 18th, uh, it's a little crisp out here, but, um, and so we're gonna make a mess while we're doing this. Uh, we're gonna be using the actual cleanser. Um, so you wanna have your engine and radiator uh, not hot. It could be our, you know, a tiny bit warm from backing it out of the garage or whatever like that, no big deal. So what we're gonna do now is essentially we're gonna use this, uh, condenser or evaporator coil cleaner evap no foam no rinse so this stuff we're basically going to spray it on liberally uh, and it's going to foam like crazy do some cleaning and then it's the foam is going to break uh, collapse and then it will sort of self rinse but we're going to also use uh, the hose and we're going to give it a, um, a gentle wash down to help get rid of it so that's why we're outside um, so this stuff, just uh, as a matter of note, uh, the one in particular that was recommended to me by our HVAC specialist, uh, this is biodegradable and it's food grade. So uh, this stuff isn't terribly awful for the environment. And so I'm not feeling too bad about using it. Basically, we're gonna basically use, get a whole bunch of dead bugs off the grill. So um, I'm gonna shoot this. There'll also be a time-lapse piece of footage to go with this. Let's get the can open. So um, the only, I've never used one of these before, so you're gonna be watching the same as me, um, but I'm going to, you're supposed to coat it super liberally because you wanna get it through the grill veins, uh, fins, and I'm gonna start at the bottom, uh, as far down as I can get at it, and then work my way up because essentially it's gonna foam like shaving cream, I think, and then it's gonna run downward, so you don't wanna start at the top because then you won't actually be shooting it through the, uh, the holes. It also works upside down, they say. So, uh, anyways, here we go. Not right side up. Oh, it has a fresh lemony scent, like they said.
All right, so I've got a pretty liberal coating, and now you can see from a close-up here that it's basically the dirt's oozing out with the foam, and that's what we were after, right? So this foam was white when it started, and we can see, you know, the areas that are more in the, the main flow of the dirt uh, and debris. These are sort of brown. If we get down in the lower areas here, it's pretty white, and that's because it wasn't in the direct flow of the air uh, where all the road grime comes through. So we're just going to sit and let this uh, foam for a minute or two more until essentially the foam breaks and it just basically the foaming action is gone and then we're going to switch to rinsing mode. Um, the, most of the foam is broken. Uh, so at this point well, all I want to do is use the sort of the gentle shower setting of the, uh, the hose and I want to rinse it through. Now, this is what we have the under tray off the car, right? Because all of this water and goop is going to basically wash out um, into the lower tray area. So it's been removed and it'll drip all over the ground. Uh, but hopefully this will uh, clean up pretty nice now. So that's looking pretty decent and uh, next step we're going to basically uh, fire the car up and drive back into the shop and we're going to let it air dry and then we'll take a look at how it ended up. Well we're back in the shop where it's a little warmer and the car's had a chance to dry out now so I thought I would talk about how the, what the results are like. So I'm going to put up a photo now of uh, the before and what it looks like uh, after the hand pick and you can see basically by doing the hand work uh, I was able to get a lot of the uh, it cleaned up. It looks pretty good already, uh, but what we aren't getting obviously it's what's down in the uh, between the fins uh, where the bugs have splattered and gone in there further. So then here's a shot comparing the um, uh, before and the final result and uh, it looks pretty much the same. It's a little bit cleaner, but we can have actually a little bit of a close-up here in person um, and uh, it's looking, you know, it doesn't look brand new, but there's certainly no bugs, you know, stuck on the outside anymore. Um, you can see some of the damage from bug or stone impacts that come through the grill and a rock hits there. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's looking pretty good. You can actually see some manufacturing marks now. Uh, these diagonal lines that are on the radiator cores that weren't visible until we used the cleaning solution. And then, uh, just for comparison, let me shine a light from behind and we can see how much uh, we can maybe see if it's any cleaner in the passageway uh, coming through. Uh, it's a little bit subjective, but I would say that uh, it's not perfect, but a lot of the bug and dirt debris that uh, was present uh, in there before has uh, washed its way out. You might have just been able to do it by hitting it with a hose, um, but I think it was worthwhile to use the cleaning agent as well. So I wouldn't probably plan on doing this uh, uh, as a separate event. But, you know, say every five years or so when you're going to change your, maybe your uh, engine coolant and you're going to be doing some work to the car and have the under tray off or maybe part of an annual service, the only real extra effort was taking off the slam panel and then spending about, you know, 11 or 12 bucks on a can of uh, uh, the cleaning solution, uh, maybe five or 10 minutes with the brushes and the vacuum and then uh, spraying this on, waiting a few minutes and then hosing it off. It wasn't a real big deal. so. Um, if that'll help keep my, you know, car in tip-top shape, um, I'm pretty happy. So this is probably also a mileage-based thing. Uh, my car is 16 years old, uh, but it, you, you only collect bugs, you know. The, the bugs basically come flying at the front of the car. Here, you wash off the bugs that are splattered on the bumper, you know, every Sunday. But the ones that get through the grill, they fly through here and die on a 200-degree, you know, radiator grill. So they bake on. So, you know, as you collect the miles, as you collect the bugs, I think it still is a good effort, you know, a good reason to get in here and once in a while clean this, maybe every five to seven years, like I said, when you're doing your engine coolant swap. So that's a wrap for this one. Uh, you can basically go ahead and put your slam panel back on, get your under tray back on and get back on the road. 
Um, so down here, you're going to find a link to my companion blog article where I'll, where I'll have links to uh, the solutions you can buy um, and a couple of the tools that we ended up using. Up here, uh, you'll probably find a link to uh, something relating to the cooling system. And uh, if you liked videos like this, please go ahead and subscribe and you'll get automatically notified when a new one comes out. And as always, I love to hear your comments. Please leave those down below. Thanks for watching.